Hello everyone out there, it is me, Majeska Sam. Anyways, welcome to a how to draw video. I haven't done one in a long time, and I know I did one in the past that was um, how to draw the full left side of the face. But anyways, I wanted to uh, re redo that video again, simply because like the first time I did it, I didn't, I obviously didn't know what I was talking about, but I do know the technique, and the technique is something I came up with by myself while learning how to draw because of how much guidelines you put into it. And if you were to take away like as much as the guidelines as possible, then it would just simply not make sense anymore. But you still have to have guidelines in order to make sense. Anyways, here we go. So I call this technique the full left side simply because it makes an L shape, an L shape. So you were to make a 90 degree angle, that's a perfect L shape. Let me just zoom in real quick so that you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here. And there we go. And just rearrange my paper. So you got this full 90 degree angle right here that you see. And well, what you do with it is um, you kind of just want this line to be a little bit shorter than this line that's up here. Um, so probably at the start at the top of your your L line you want to make sort of a teardrop so you kind of want to go up then down then back around kind of like making the outline of the head basically is what you want to make and it has this weird odd looking tear shape I would say um, but that's fine and um, that's that's perfect if you got this this um this sort of guideline all covered, that's how you want to start your drawings off most of the time. If you want to do the left side view, um, you do the right 90 degree angle. This this will be the face, and then this will be the head back here. Now you don't really have to follow this guideline. You kind of want the face to be at perfect angle as the straight thing, but still have the round curvature of the head. So, we'll start right here, and then we're gonna go down just a bit until like you have the line touching your 90 degree angle guideline. And then you kinda just wanna make it touch, and then you kinda wanna bring it back just a little bit, probably right, right there. So now that you got this weird kind of curve that meets up with the line probably still goes over it just a little bit but as long as you have it like that and you still have your 90 degree angle in there you can follow the guideline pretty much easily and simple as that now there's some things that you still want to touch up and everything like that and you don't have to really touch it up but that that's if you want to um, so probably like right here is going to be the forehead, I would say. So probably like right here, from where this line meets up with the actual 90 degree angle and where this curvature is about right here, you kind of are somewhere in between here, you kind of just want to have a nose bridge kind of dip in right there, nose bridge. And then probably like right about here is where the nose comes back and meets the face. And then the lips kind of pucker out. And then the and then the chin is about right there. So I know that the, <laughs> the nose kind of looks kind of scary, um, that having that space right there. And it's okay. Um, what you can do is you can just sort of just drop the line just a little bit. If you, if you want him to have, or her, to have like a small nose or a big nose. Um, depends on character development, if you want it that way. <laughs> so I'm just going to draw the nose out. The nose is going to go over the 90 degree line and it'll basically have that curve right then and there. Like that. And this forehead is going to meet up with the top line that you just drew before. It's going to meet up with that line up there. Now it's been a, quite a while since I've drawn, so it may come out looking 
not as beautiful as the day I, I wanted to start drawing and making drawing videos. Um, some because after what happened in my life, so, okay, so, right where the top of the nose is, is probably like about right here is where the line for the eye is going to be. Now, you don't want to have too much space right here. Like if you have the eye like way right here per se, you don't want it too far back, otherwise it's gonna look very strange to the person. So if you have the line or the eye, it's sort of in, sort of right there, then it makes sense and then it, everything starts coming together and it makes perfect total sense. But yeah, you, you don't want too much space from the nose to the eye, otherwise it's going to look very strange. Um, so you got the eye coming in all right there. And you got the bottom of the eye right here, and you got the top of the eye right here. Now, I, if you remember back to my first video that I did, I told you that the lip line doesn't really meet with the lips at all. It's just more of a gap in between the lips and then right there. Not too far, as long as the line meets up with the side of the eye, which is like probably right here, then you're good and you have a normalized face. <laughs> you don't have to be too scared to draw. Now if you're following along with this, and it's okay. Um, I kind of take things very slow and talk it out and show you what you want to do and what you don't want to do, basically is what I'm saying. So the line is about right here. I know I don't really do guidelines for the nose or the lips, um, but this is just more of a simplification if you guys want to get a perfect head shape correct. Like if you're trying to draw the left side of the face and you're not really getting that curvature right, or if you're not going to get getting the whole head correctly, then you can just do this L shape method and then just do a round tear, tear shape. Like if you want to like do a tear, you can just draw like a tear shape like this and then bam like that and then this looks like it's an alien head or something but um, I've started noticing that when I draw I usually use this method um, simply because it's easy and I can get my drawings done like 10 times as fast and everything. So the jaw line or the jaw for the jaw it's gonna go down and then cross over the bottom line and then it's just going to go up to where this this point right here meets up with the tear and then it's going to go about a 180 degree angle upwards or this way it's going to go right there and then it makes perfect it's starting to look like it's perfect <laughs> it's starting to look like it's perfect um, but um, if you remember the head the way that I told you is that if you have a a line going down and this is your medium line, this is where the line is supposed to be in the middle, you could do a box method and then just draw a plus sign in there. Um, that would be somewhat easier for you guys uh, to do a box method. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Um, but it, you have the plus sign in there and you do the face that's really close to this side of the, the area and you have the tear stone that touches about the top line and then the back line and then the bottom line too as well. So this kind of takes up the whole box area. But where the line it, in the media in the medium is about right here. And it's about like that. So this is your plus sign, the plus shape and everything. And you can do this basically on a grid on a grid paper. I will show you that guys. I will show you that. I will show you that if I get grid paper I have to find some. <laughs> So, I have to buy some. Um, so now that you got the eye, now the the way to draw the eye is it's a little bit cooler. Um, oh, let me rearrange my camera. There we go. Um, so the line is gonna go, or the the eye is kind of like do like a half an oval oval shape for the eye, and then you, this area kind of just goes down goes straight down until it makes a perfect oval. The way I was doing it before, beforehand, is by um, 
by drawing the eye is I would do a straight line downward and then I would curve the line this way and then I would do that and it kind of just looked very strange to my teacher. He would be like, what the heck? What, is that an eye? <laughs> what am I looking at here? He'd be like, you're very weird, Sam. That's not how you draw eyes. And The way he told me is that the iris, it kind of sticks out, or the eye sticks outward like that. And then it has this really sharp angle until like it curves all the way back to right here. And then that's how you draw it. And then there's the another dip in the eye that's like that. So if you're to draw a real life eye, you could do it this way. And then you have the circle in the iris, which is kind of right there. And it has that shape. And then right here is kind of clear space. Clear space. And then you have the, the full on eyeball, which is after that. Sort of like that. And that's how like the, a, a real eye kind of looks from the side. If you ever look at your eyeball from the side, you can kind of see how this kind of um, portrays a realistic eyeball, but, <laughs> but this is anime we're drawing, so that's that's not the case. So that's what we did here. We're kind of drawing like, almost like a realistic eyeball, but you don't have to draw that realistic. And then the, the top of the eye is just going to come in, and it's not going to go too far back, otherwise it's going to look very strange. You kind of want it really up close and personal with this one, and then kind of have that um, curvature going downward, and then you have this little line right here that connects it all together and everything. And what, it, what maybe this guy is like looking at a, looking at somebody very heroically, I would say, like a, he's having a, a heroic grin, basically. So you're gonna have to draw the eyebrow, which is about right here. Um, it's not too far from the eyelash. If he has like a heroic grin, meaning like he has this this kind of um, looked look in his eye that he's about to he knows he's gonna win a fight or something. So there we go. We got the eyebrow. And the eyebrow is not too far from the eye. Um, it's at a decent decent amount of length in between the two. But this guy is like kind of full eyed. He has a full eye mocking the other guy that he's looking at maybe. <laughs> Um, so you got this nice curvature in the, the eyebrow there. And the eyebrow doesn't go really far back either. It just cuts off right about right here. Um, not too far from the eye too as well. If you were to do like this on a grid piece of paper, it would look very magnificent, I would say. <laughs> um, I would have to show you guys uh, grid paper because I used to draw with grid paper and it would, it would look fantabulous back in the days when I drew my anime characters. So there we go, we got that whole area. We got the jawline, we got the, the face, the lips puckering out, making, we got the lips and everything, we got the nose, and we got the nose bridge. And right here, we're gonna have the eyebrow, and eyebrow line, and then there we go. So he has this nice, beautiful face. I would say, but we're not done yet. We have to draw the hair, and then after that we gotta go into everything else. And I'll show you, I would say several different ways you could do hair, but um, you could um, just think about how hair shape looks on somebody. Like you got the Joker hairstyle, and then let me just clean this place. Clean this up just real quick. I know I'm, a, I'm erasing lines, but I'm just gonna clean it up so that we get, I can show you what I mean and what I'm talking about here. So that way you don't have to look at all these dark lines that are just right here and not make sense. So this is what I mean by the eyebrow dip. So you got this weird little thing right here. If you were to look at somebody from the side, you would notice this right here. It's not as strong in some people, but it is very strong in some some people that I meet. Um, I, I generally look at their faces so I can remember what their names, so I, I know their facial feature features, and I can draw them perfectly. Um, so you got this nice dip, and it meets with the, the center of the eye, basically, and the center of the eye is kind of like right there, and he's kind of looking to his side, or this way in that direction. Um, so yeah. Uh, the hairstyle for this character is probably going to be, um, let's give him like a really, um, how would you say, kind of an Elvis look. 
He's got this, this hair that goes straight up this way. Maybe it curls, it curves, and everything. The hairline is going to be just about right here. Now the hairline for the, the top of the head, it has to be at least above the head, like about that much. But maybe this character has thick hair, so he has his hair that's above right here. And then as it gets to the back of the head, the back of the head, the hair is kind of closer to the skull, and it kind of curves in like that. That's basically about it. That's, that's what I know from drawing hairs, so... We're gonna draw the hairline that's gonna come around probably about right here, and then it's gonna dip down and curve to about right there. And it has this really small, small point to it. Simply because the ear is right here. Because where this, this plus sign is, or where this plus sign is on the head, is where the egg the ear is going to be. I don't know if you guys ever did like a realistic head before in your art class or if you are taking art classes you would know that the ear kind of lines up with the eyebrow there and then the mouth from the lips it's right there. So if you were to get um, your face and then kind of measure from your thumb to your index finger of where the eyebrow your eyebrow to your mouth, the line of your mouth is, and you just drag it along your face to your ear, you would notice that your ear is sort of in perfect alignment with that, those, those proportions right there. So your ear is kind of in um, a perfect area. It's in a perfect area. So it's going to go up and then just wrap around here, and then the ear basically ends right here so that's basically where it is and then you got the curvature for the inner ear right there and then you got this thing right here and it goes this way has like a small little space it comes in like that and then just jumps this way and then you got that and then you got this ear and now this guy has a really big ear <laughs> he's got really big ears and then we'll just add some, some spike to his little roof on his hair here. There we go. And then right here is going to be a, a hairline that connects everything to right there. So there we go. And his hair is going to be somewhat a little bit higher than, or a little bit lower. And then right here is going to be where his hairline meets up with the point of where the head has all these different hairs going in different directions. I don't know if you noticed that, there's a point on your head that you have that spot there, and it's always there. It's never going to change, it's never going to disappear. It's always in that same spot in your head, and your hair kind of goes from that little hole right there, and it goes all over your hair, or your head, not your hair, but it goes all over your head, basically is what I'm saying. And the neck for this one is about Kind of close to the jawline. Don't want to give him a fat neck, so about right there. And this one too as well. So going from the original guideline you had before, right here is where you're gonna, where your neck is gonna meet the skull. So kind of close to the ear, probably about right about here. Because I noticed that when the jawline meets up with the back of the skull, it's it's more kind of close to each other and it makes this plus sign right here too as well and it, it's it's in perfect alignment so there we go there's his um there's his neck his neck and then the hair in the back area it's going to come in and then just follow the it's going to follow his neck All right there and then it's going to curve it's just going to bring upward to like the back of the ear and that's basically how you can draw hair easy as pie if you know the layout of the skeleton and how the skull looks. Let me zoom out just a little bit so I can show you everything. There we go. Maybe make these, these lines back here darker, but I'm going to go over it with a, a marker and I'll erase everything in the end. 
um, so that way I can show you everything and how it looks from guideline to guideline and I will be right back. <laughs> So, yeah, um, the, the, the line method, the L-shaped method, it usually helps to make this, um, the face more straight and, and more to get in those guidelines and everything like that. And I should, and, um, his chin may be a little bit too big. I don't know. <laughs> it's just my OCD kicking in, basically. Um, so, if you're to do the line method, the, the L-shaped method, it, it really helps, too. Um, but there's another method that I learned that actually helps with this one too, as well as um, the box shape method. I don't know if I have like a straight enough line to do it with, um, but it's it's basically like um, you do a 90 degree angle, the same way we did, and it's about right there. That's the L shape of the line, and this this line has to be longer than this line over here. And what you do is that you do another line that's about the same length as this one, and then you draw a straight line downward, and then you draw a line that kind of can um, is the medium of that, and then you do the same thing that you did over here, and drawing out these lines. So you got this um this four squares basically is what I'm saying. And then you're just gonna have to follow follow through with um, drawing the forehead and the head shape and everything like that. And you got this nice tear shape that touches almost about all the sides. Right there, I forgot to make this side a little bit shorter and everything. So it's about right there. It's about the same thing with what I did. Um, the median is a little bit too far back with this one. Um, it should be like about Right there, and then this line is way too far back. It should be right there too as well. Um, so that's the the box method. Uh, I, I will do another video that kind of goes over this this box method thing. Um, it's a little bit easier to do the box method if you want to draw the tear shape a little bit better for the head of the character and everything like that. Now, if you do this, it, it's really helpful in a way because the eye always rests above the medium line, which is about right here. And then the mouth is kind of connected, or it's kind of lower to about right there. So it, it really helps if you're to follow the guideline, but I usually do the L shape. And it helps me figure out the tear stone, whether or not to make it longer, to make it shorter, to make it any other way. So. If you were to follow the box line method, you would you tend to forget, or you tend to um, sort of go back way too far back because you want to, the tear shape to make or to fit in with this line that you see here, the, the box and the guidelines that you did, and it's always hard because you get the measurements off wrong and you don't get the measurements correct, and it ends up making this backside a little bit too shorter, and you end up having like a a weird tear that goes this on them like that and then goes like that. You you might end up with um, something that's similar to like this if you were to do the box method. Uh, the box method is easy for beginners. Um, it's just really hard to find the measurements correct correct enough to to follow through with it. Um, that's why I kind of I kind of like going with the L shape method that I usually do with my drawings because it makes it makes it more simpler and it's more compressed and it's it's easy to work with in my opinion but anyways that is that thank you guys for watching um i'll be sure to come up with another one next time and we will do some more how to draw videos in the future i really like in this i haven't drawn in a long time so i'm actually pretty glad that this character came out Correct, <laughs> as what I'm saying, because I haven't done, I haven't drawn anything in a long time. It's been almost like a whole year, basically. It's been a year, actually. It's been a whole year since I have not drawn like this before. So, yeah. Anyways, give this video a like or a thumbs up if you did enjoy, and it's really helpful. If it's really helpful, if you want me to change some things, then go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below. And I will listen to your feedback and I'll hopefully 
come and revisit this method again in the future. But yeah, anyways. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you guys out there. Like and favorite the video if you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe, it really does help me a lot and it motivates me to continue on and do things that are more interesting. <laughs> anyways, peace.